In today's video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the number of atoms in molecules and compounds. Also, we're going to talk about how to calculate the number of atoms if we're given the number of moles or the number of grams. So let's go ahead and begin. Let's start with part A. So we have the molecule ozone. As we could see, there's three atoms in this molecule. So the answer is three. Next, we have dinitrogen pentoxide, N2O5. So this is one molecule, but the number of atoms in this molecule is 2 plus 5, which is 7. So this molecule has two nitrogen atoms and five oxygen atoms. Next, we have magnesium nitrate, Mg. NO3. Now how many atoms are present here? So notice that there's no number in front of Mg. If there's no number, it's always assumed to be a 1. So we have one magnesium atom. Now technically, magnesium is an ion in this compound, but let's keep things simple. Let's not overcomplicate this. Nitrate, NO3, that's a polyatomic ion. It's an ion composed of many atoms. Now there's a one in front of nitrogen. If you multiply one times two, you get two nitrogen atoms. Now we have a subscript of three in front of the oxygen and a two for the polyatomic ion. So if you multiply three times two, you get six oxygen atoms. So we have a total of nine atoms in this ionic compound. One magnesium atom, two nitrogen atoms, six oxygen atoms. Now let's do the same for calcium phosphate. So we have three calcium ions. We'll treat as atoms for this example. Now phosphorus, we have two phosphorus atoms, and for oxygen, it's going to be four times two. So eight oxygen atoms. Two plus eight is 10 plus three. That's a total of 13 atoms in this compound. So that's how you can determine the number of atoms or ions in a compound. Now, let's move on to number two. How many atoms are in four moles of carbon? In other words, how can we convert from moles to atoms? So here's the conversion factor that you need to use. One mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Now, think about what that means. Perhaps you're, you've heard of this one, a dozen is basically 12. It's a number. So if you have a dozen eggs, you have 12 eggs. If you have a dozen calculators, you have 12 calculators. A mole represents a specific number. If you have a mole of eggs, you have 6 times 10 to the 23 eggs. If you have a mole of books, you have 6 times 10 to the 23 books. So a mole of atoms is 6 times 10 to the 23 atoms. It's just a quantity. It's a way to represent a very large number of something. So if there are four moles of carbon, how many atoms of carbon do we have? So to convert it, we're going to put one mole of carbon on the bottom and its equivalency uh, or six times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon on top. Now, sometimes this could be molecules, sometimes it could be atoms. It really depends on what the identity of the substance is. Since it's simply C, C is an atom. So we write atoms of carbon. So we're going to set this up in such a way that the unit's moles of carbon cancel. The answer is going to be 4 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23. 
and that turns out to be 2.408, but we can round that to 2.4. So I'm going to put approximately 2.4 times 10 to the 24 atoms of carbon. So that's how you can convert from moles to atoms. Simply multiply the number of moles by Avogadro's number, or 6 times 10 to the 23. Number 3. How many atoms are in 5 moles of oxygen gas? Now, this problem, it's similar to the last problem, but it's a little different. Carbon, when you see the symbol carbon, it represents an atom of carbon. Oxygen gas, this is a diatomic molecule. A molecule basically is a substance with many atoms. So O2 is defined as a molecule. It's a molecule composed of two atoms of oxygen. So this is going to be a two-step process. We're going to convert from moles of oxygen gas to molecules, and then from molecules to atoms. The reason is because O2 is not an atom itself, it's a molecule, because it's composed of many atoms. O3, ozone, that's also a molecule. It's not an atom. It's made up of three oxygen atoms. Oxygen gas and ozone, these are allotropes of oxygen. They're made up of the same element, but there are different forms of that element. Oxygen gas is what we breathe in. Ozone is found in the upper atmosphere. It protects us from UV radiation from the sun. So now let's go ahead and work on this problem. Let's start with five moles of oxygen. Now, using Avogadro's number, we're going to convert from moles of O2 to molecules of O2. So on top, we're going to have molecules of O2. So now we can cross out the unit moles of O2. Now, we're going to change from molecules of O2 to atoms of O2. So we could say that for every one molecule of O2 or oxygen gas, there are two atoms of oxygen. So now molecules of O2 will cancel. Thus the final answer is going to be 5 times Avogadro's number times 2, which will give us 6.02 times 10 to the 24 atoms of oxygen. So that's how many atoms are found in 5 moles of O2. Number 4. How many atoms are present in 100 grams of aluminum? So in this problem what we need to do is convert from grams to moles and then moles to atoms. So let's start with what we're given. 100 grams of aluminum. We'll put that over one. Now how can we convert from grams to moles? To do that we need to find the molar mass of aluminum and we could find it by using the periodic table. If you go to your periodic table and you look at the bottom number below aluminum you'll see 26.98. That's the average atomic mass of aluminum which is the same as the molar mass. What this means is that there's it's 26.98 grams per mole. What that means is that one mole of aluminum has a mass of 26.98 grams. And that's our conversion factor. So there's 26.98 grams of aluminum in every one mole of aluminum. Now notice that we wrote it in such a way that the unit grams of aluminum will cancel. So now let's convert moles to atoms using Avogadro's number. One mole of aluminum is equivalent to 6 times 10 to the 23 atoms of aluminum. So we're going to multiply by the numbers on top and divide by the numbers on the bottom. 
So it's 100 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23 divided by 26.98. And this works out to be 2.23 times 10 to the 23 atoms of aluminum. So that's how you can convert from grams to atoms. Number five, how many molecules are present in 100 grams of sulfur hexafluoride, SF6? And then we'll answer the second part, how many atoms of fluorine are present in that same sample? So let's begin, let's start with what we're given, 100 grams of sulfur hexafluoride. Now like the last problem, we're gonna convert from grams to moles, and then moles, instead of atoms, moles to molecules. So first we need the molar mass of sulfur hexafluoride. We have one sulfur atom and six fluorine atoms. Sulfur has an atomic mass of 32.06, and fluorine, it's 19. Thus, this is going to be 32.06 plus 6 times 19, which is 146.06 grams per mole. What this means is that one mole of sulfur hexafluoride has a mass of 146.06 grams. So we could cancel grams of SF6. Now let's convert from moles to molecules. So one mole of SF6 is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of SF6. So this is going to give us the answer to the first part of the problem, which I put down here. So it's going to be 100 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23 divided by 146.06. And we're going to get 4.1216 times 10 to the 23 molecules of sulfur hexafluoride. So that's the answer to part A of the problem. Now let's move on to part B. All we need is one additional step. We need to convert from molecules to atoms. One molecule of SF6 contains six atoms of fluorine. So that's the additional step that we need. So it's going to be our previous answer times 6. And that's going to be 2.473 times 10 to the 24 atoms of fluorine. So that's it for this video. Now you know how to calculate the number of atoms in a variety of different situations.